Hey guys, so today's video will be about bottlenecking and breaking limits. So as I get a lot of comments telling me stuff which is not true but is logical. So I'm gonna try to explain it because people telling me yes but you're running through a mini PCI lane and it's at Gen 2 and you have this process and you have this RAM and only support so much and yet I'm breaking like all of the limits and I'm gonna show it, prove it and explain it because um, there is a lot of factors that make this setup work worse than on the desktop which is natural but for some reason I'm getting really close to the desktop performance with my setup and I'm gonna show that right now so uh, first we're gonna talk about bottlenecking so this is what bottlenecking looks like if you show it it's uh, when you have a lot of traffic as you can see there's a lot of traffic but then there's something that will squeeze it tight so only certain amount of traffic can pass through that means even if your graphics card can perform this if your processor will bottleneck it, only this much will be displayed, so you're losing performance. Meaning, if you have a GTX 1080 and you have an i5 from like six years ago, you will lose frame rate a lot. So um, yeah, I'm gonna quickly show everything that I have. So as you can see, I have an i7 2760QM, which is a 2011 laptop processor. It runs at 2.4. Uh, stock and a 3.5 turbo which you can never run at but I will explain it later. I'm running an external M uh, ni MSI 970 through a mini PCI two times lane at one uh, one what's it called at the PC line one time so no 16 and now you would say this bottlenecks it as much as this does so I'm gonna explain how you can check the bottleneck and how you should think about it and what you should accept and what not because if you have a 960 and it is not bottlenecked and you're getting 40 FPS okay that's good you have no bottleneck now imagine you would calculate it and the 970 would have a bottleneck of 12% let's say that means you're losing 12% on the performance that the 970 could deliver. It doesn't mean it will bottleneck you under the performance you already have. So it still would be an upgrade. So see it like this. If you get 40 FPS with the 960 and then you get a 970 and that could get 70 FPS, you would win 30 FPS. But the bottleneck would remove 7 FPS. That still gives you 23 FPS. That's over 50% advantage over the 960. That makes, in my opinion, still worth it. Not if you have to pay six time amount of the money, but if you can get it. Like I got my 970 for 20 euros more than I sold my 960 for. That's 20 euros of an upgrade. And I did go from 40 to 60 FPS, which is like 50% increase. That's for no money at all so that's considerable that's a considerable amount so you shouldn't be talking about bottlenecks and stuff but here's the odd part like I said mini PCI one time lane at gen 2 this card is made for 16 times at gen 3 and a mobile CPU so let's go through this this website can do basic calculations on bottlenecking Take this website with the grain of salt. The thing is, it only takes the stock core, uh, clock speed. It doesn't take into consideration the turbo boost. So if you would press on calculate, you can pick your card. I'm going to go with Intel. Let's go with my old setup, 2630QM. It was my old setup with a GTX 960. So we have an, oh, by the way, I sound sick because I am sick. I had three four gigabyte RAM wheels of DDR3. I had an SSD. Now, if you would press calculate, I think I can close that one now. You would see the bottleneck was only 6% for the processor. That means even on the two gigahertz, that was only 6%. Here's the thing. People have something wrong about turbo boost. People say, yeah, turbo boost is only one core. No, it's not. It is only at one core for the maximum amount of speed. That means if you have a turbo boost, two, this, this one has two gigahertz, 
to 2.9. That means it can run on one core 2.9, but it can run on two cores 2.8. It can run on three cores on uh, 2.7, and it can run on all four cores at 2.6 gigahertz. And if your temperatures are good, it will always run at that 2.6 gigahertz. So as you can see right here, this is my CPU usage, and my is a 2.4 to 3.5 gigahertz. But you can see all cores are running at 3.2. Sometimes one core goes down and then they bump up to 3.4 gigahertz. That's because it, as long as you have less cores active, it will increase the turbo on one of them. But still, on average, all cores will run on 3.2 gigahertz. This processor ran on 2.6 gigahertz on average. That means if you take the 6% on 2 gigahertz, that means you have no bottleneck at all on the 960 with my old 2 gigahertz 2630QM. So I did the same thing with my new setup. So I have an i7-2760 2.4 stock with a 970. And that results in a 12% bottleneck meaning if you have 60 fps you would lose 7 fps still making 53 fps but again this is with stock this processor runs at 3.2 gigahertz with turbo that's a lot that's like at that's 800 megahertz more than here that's a lot that would remove the bottleneck almost completely it would be like three or four percent and as this site says Everything above 10% is considered as a bottleneck, meaning my processor does not bottleneck this graphics card, even though it shows it here. That's why I said you must keep a grain of salt on this side because it don't calculate the turbo boost. But again, I can show you. It's running at 3.2 gigahertz. And if I put on a benchmark, which I'll do in a second, I can show you that. I can prove. But then here's another way. And this is the best way, I think. This is the best way because it is real world usage. What you do is you go, go on Google and you type, uh, let's take the Valley benchmark. And I'm recording and everything, so this is really slow right now. Right now, 970. And you will get this, like a result on Reddit and people request their, what they get. And here is the list. You can see Valley, 58 FPS, 2400. This is on the desktop, 55, 53, 55. And this is all on the Xtreme HD preset. And he has 54, 59. This is probably, uh, yeah, this is a very strong setup. So 59, that's a lot. That's much more than the others, 53. So as you can see, the average is about 55. So what you can do is now, I have my eGPU. I run the same program. And now you would say, yeah, you have the mini PCI, you have Gen 2, and a laptop processor. So if they are getting 55, I'm pretty sure you're only getting 40. And here's the thing. Here's the battle uh, benchmark. 55.2. And as you can see, 2760 QM at 2.4 gigahertz four times. And it has turbo boost because you can see clearly here it runs at 3.2 gigahertz. That's why I say it's running always at 3.2. It goes up when one core goes down and the usage is nothing because this processor is more than capable. And um, you can see Extreme HD 1080, eight times NT Elysian, 970, four gigs, my processor, and I'm running 55, which is exactly the same as any other 970 runs on the desktop. So here is the proof that my laptop still smashes the scores. Yes, I do get bottlenecks but not on most things, on some things. Like if I run Simu, which is a very heavy CPU intensive uh, emulator, then my graphic card bar the next out. Then I get at least like 20% less performance. But overall, even with the mini PCI port, even with the second gen uh, PCI lane, and even with my laptop processor, I'm still smashing the same scores out as any desktop do. So don't get this shit again with the, yeah, it's a shitty setup, you bottleneck, you... No, no, the scores don't lie. I run this benchmark. I didn't even do multiple. I just ran one. You can see my frame rate up here. It's absolutely tearing it apart. My CPU is six, six years old. Look at the usage. It's running at 3.2 gigahertz. Most 2070 laptops don't run like this. And again, my GPU is not... 
it's it's at 100% but it's performing it's doing it it's doing what it's supposed to do it runs at the frame rate it's supposed to do so this is absolutely great that means even though I do have a bottleneck on some things most of the time I do not it's great so I, I have done this with other benchmarks and still my graphics card performs like 10 to 0% different than any other desktop counterpart, counterpart of this. So this one had a little higher, but again, this was absolutely the same. Sometimes I run at 130 FPS actually, but that's real world. You can think about it. Yeah, it doesn't sound logical. Why would it perform the same on PCI 2 and um, one timeline? There's some crazy Russian guy who take their graphics card on the desktop computers, put tape over the PCI port and make their graphics card one at one time and they get the same performance. It's it's a big road for future graphics card like the 1080 Ti might use that lanes. But most cards, the 970 is still a very high card if actually. So it's not using the full PCI free gen and everything, but it's still working even on the lower end. If the, the road might be tighter, but it's doing it, so it's really hard to explain this. But as you, this site is if you want to build an eGPU, you can use this site and take your setup and calculate what. But you do have to keep in mind that you actually will have turbo boost. So look up your turbo boost, think about it about how many megahertz and that can decrease. So let's say you have uh, 4790k. So this is the CPU that I want for my next build. I will still have my 970. I will get uh, 8 gigs two times. And I still have my SSD. Yeah. Wow, even that shows. 8% bottleneck. But that's without the turbo boot. It's on 4 gigahertz. So you can see this bottlenecks, this setup bottlenecks 8%. And my processor, my laptop bottlenecks 12% with stock. So take take a piece of that and then think about, again, calling stuff a bottleneck. Jesus Christ, that's one of the best processes you can get. And it's still bottlenecks. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, something you can do to check out your bottlenecks. I really recommend this one. This is a very good idea. Google your graphics card, the benchmark, and check the scores if you have the same with others. And um, again, yeah, this. Oh, I'm I'm gonna quickly show something else. Here, it's dual shadow, so you have to count all. My maximum supported memory clock is 800, means 1.6 gigahertz, 1,600 megahertz RAM is the max my processor supports. And look what I'm running at, 2.1 gigahertz, breaking the limits, people. So. There was this comment line that you can use that also shows that, but my RAM is running at 2.1 gigahertz, even though my processor only supports 1600. I don't give a shit. It's doing it. And as long as it's doing it, I don't care if it shouldn't do it logically. So you can tell me, oh yeah, but your processor only supports that. I don't give a shit. It's working. You can see it there. It's not doing the limit. It's over the limit. So you can tell me whatever you want. You're wrong. It's doing it right. So. And that's the thing, I post most of this stuff in my videos and people don't read it or don't watch the videos and then they come, yeah, but it's probably like, no, no, do your research before you comment something. If you don't want to be an idiot on the internet, don't post something you have no knowledge of yet. If you think in a, in a normal desktop setup that's the case and you have a very customized laptop that's completely different from everything you ever seen, don't use your logic from a setup that you know for a setup you don't know because it's not gonna work. So this is a bit of a rant actually, but it's also some information for people who actually really wanna find out how to get rid of a bottleneck or see if it's a bottleneck at all. So. If you have any questions you can ask and maybe even read the comments because I answer most things already. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's everything about bottleneck I would say. And again, this side grain of salt, it's not taking in consider consideration the turbo boost clocks and stuff. Yeah, so that's that. And uh, 
the bottleneck is really not that bad. It 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 does exist in some stuff like Simu. That I really get the graphics card bottleneck, but that's because it's also killing this CPU at the same time because it's a very heavy emulator. But overall, if you play GTA and stuff, I get the same same uh, frame rates as most desktops. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, yeah, I get a bottleneck because Tomb Raider is really heavy and if it's pushing a lot of VRAM, then I get bottleneck because the traffic gets too big. But for most overall stuff that uses 1 to 2 gigabytes of VRAM, I'm completely fine. And even if I lose 10% of the performance, I will go from 70 to 60 FPS. My laptop usually runs 5 FPS without this setup. So don't cut the don't come with this crap, really. This performance is so much higher than this laptop was ever capable of and that's the point not if it could run better yes it could run better that's what i say to many people a ferrari also runs faster than your car does that mean you need a ferrari to go to work no if your car works for you you don't need a two hundred thousand dollar ferrari i don't need a desktop it would be nice to build but i don't need the performance at all this is working more than good so that's that enough of the rant well thanks for watching Bye.